In this section, we would be focusing on Chinese civilization. Now, the most interesting thing about Chinese civilization is this is one of the civilizations that has never ended in the history. That means it has survived through all, all ups and downs and all upheavals that are there. Now, this is the region of Chinese civilization, as you can see, and two major rivers, the Yangtze Kiang and the Yellow River, or the Huangho, which is also known as Swaro of China, are the two major rivers along which you have the Chinese civilization that has established. In the north, we can see you have have the Great Wall of China that lies and this Great Wall of China was an important boundary to protect from the Mongol attacks to China. Now this was uh, built during a series of emperors is around 2400 kilometers long and the height is varies for from 4.5 to 9 meters at different point it has more than 10,000 wash towers which are located across the Great Wall of China and definitely this is one of the things that is visible even from the space so those are some of the key things that we focus about the China now coming on to the next important aspect is understanding the development so as we said most of the developments were seen across the river so here we have the uh, yellow river which is also known as the Huango river followed by the another river which is the Yangtze Kiang river which is also considered as one of the longest rivers in the Asia and then we also focus on how the developments took place which were mainly related to the uh, the attacks or the invasion so you have the great wall of China that could be seen here and this boundary as you can see here is one of the boundaries which focuses on the idea of how uh, the attacks were basically controlled and this was the kind of boundary that was built uh, to protect the region of China from the Mongol attacks during that time. The next important thing that we would focus across here is the developments. Now coming on to the developments, we have the very first ideas which focuses on the dynasties. So the very first dynasty that could be seen here was the region or the extent of the Shang dynasty which is visible here. Okay, So this was the only region where you had the Chinese establishments that were seen. Later on, the region of yellow which occupied the Beijing, the Xinjiang and the Chang'ang region along with the Nanjing region was the region occupied by the Zhu kingdom. Finally, you have the Zing empire, the Xing empire which included the regions uh, which was far beyond here and finally the Han kingdom which further extended. So it was a kind of slow and gradual expansion of the civilization from the coastal area. Still today we see most of the developments are confined to the coastal areas. Uh, the ma majority of the mainland China is arid and is dry. You have the dry desert or the cold deserts that are seen here. Now the first dynasty as we said was the Shang dynasty. And and China has seen an evolution from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age and that is about one of the uniqueness about the Chinese civilization. Now coming on next is understanding the town planning. So town planning was really really interesting. Now in the city of Shenzhong as it has been seen you have nine squares that were divided. The city was divided into nine squares. Now that were numbered as four nine two three five seven eight one and six. The innermost was the region where you had the government buildings and the offices. Uh, at the region of nine you had the farmers market. Here in the region of one auditoriums were established as you can see and the, in, in the regions of 3 and 7 you had temples that were established. So that was a structure or a town planning that was seen. Now if we talk about houses houses were made of bamboo and bricks uh, the houses of the rich and the poor were very very different for the rich private courtyards were seen but that was not the case for the poor people also the temple style of pagodas was very very common seen mainly in the regions of south china during that time houses has interestingly a unique feature which was most important and that was all of the houses were south facing that is not true in most of the indian ones 
वास्तु शास्त्र इज इफ वी टॉक अबाउट सो साउथ फेसिंग हाउसेज एंड फैंसी डेकोरेशन वर असेंशियल्स इन द लाइवलीहुड ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल कमिंग ऑन टू एग्रीकल्चर एग्रीकल्चर वॉज मेनली वीट राइस मिलेट सोयाबीन बार्ले दैट वॉज सीन बिसाइड्स दैट टी was very very important you had the olong tea you had the green tea that was seen and then besides tea silk was again important and then you had the development of silk route that started from china and today also we talk about the silk route not only the land silk route but the maritime uh, maritime silk route as well now silk was obtained from mulberry leaves and it was believed that uh, the process of obtaining silk from the cocoons was very well developed during chinese period similarly when we come on to animals domestication of horses was very very important and considered auspicious during that time uh, besides these developments we have numerous developments like development of gunpowder development of compass they were excellent navigators they moved across the region with the help of well developed compasses uh, understanding the seismic waves was important and seismographs were developed to understand the the earthquake patterns and waves similarly we also have a unique calendar that was a kind of amalgamation of solar and lunar calendar with 365 days and 12 months that was uh, demarcated under the chinese calendar chinese script has is pictographic you have various pictures that are part of the script the religion is basically worship of the ancestors uh, no specific religion except confucianism is followed so confucianism uh, was propounded by confucius and this was mainly a code of conduct focusing on right and wrong morality uh, thoughtfulness modesty as some of the key elements of confucianist philosophy uh, china had excellent trade relations excellent trade relations with uh, the countries like egypt mesopotamia then you have india japan and you had a series of development that was seen in those regions also uh, the development across various things were important for example paper was developed and you had printing press that started in china which was again one of the major developments which changed the style of living for the world so this was about some of the key highlights on chinese civilization as we said china was one of the major civilizations which never ended and it has been seen as a constant civilization running across ages from bronze age to iron age and the neolithic period so those were some of the key highlights we have covered the different civilizations like the harappan civilization mesopotamian civilization in our previous lectures so stay tuned for many more updates on history from our side we would be bringing many more interesting sessions for you have a wonderful day ahead